Do you guys know the biggest, the cheapest, sometimes the softest, and also the harshest light you have right now? Natural light is an excellent source of illumination for photography as it provides a soft, diffused light that can create a natural and organic look in images. Today's video will be talking about the natural light and how you as a photographer would use cheap light source to create stunning, dramatic and moody portrait. There are several types of natural light, each with its own unique qualities and characteristics. There are four types of natural light I would want to talk about. And I know you're also confused. How are there four types of natural light? Natural light is natural light, right? But yeah, I would explain and explore more on these four types that I've come up with so that you know. I didn't mention there were four types of natural light, right? These are the four types. There's direct sunlight, diffused sunlight, backlight, and golden hour. Direct sunlight is when the, when the sun hits your subjects directly, it creates strong shadows, it creates hard shadows, and it creates deep shadows. Diffused light is quite softer and less intense than direct light or direct sunlight. You can get diffused light by putting your subjects in the shade when there's still sun up and around. Lights catching through leaves or buildings. That's also an example of diffused lighting. Or passing it through an object. Can be a reflector, can be a screen. Can even be any material which allows light to pass through. That is where we find diffused light. The third one which is backlight. Backlight is just placing your subject right in front of your light source. So your back will be facing the light source which is in sun. All you would have to do is to figure out the direction or where the sun is positioned at that particular moment and you shoot with it. I usually don't encourage people shooting with backlight. Reason is most of the subjects we shoot here in Ghana are dark skin subjects and to light a dark skin subject with backlight then all you're looking out for is silhouettes and looking at what I like to do or what I am an enthusiast of which is the dark skin melanin. I like to see my skin tones rather than put them in a silhouette. Unless I'm being creative and trying to create something different from the usual things I create. That's where obviously I would use backlighting. First of all, artistic and dramatic portraits are relative. It depends on the photographer and how he or she wants to convey the image they want. As you can see, in as much as the light is hitting me, the light is not hitting me. You're still under direct light, but it's passing through opaque subjects, which is the leaves from this particular tree. Right, so this is what we call scattered lighting. When you would want to use sunlight, direct sunlight creatively, make sure you have pleasing plants around to create shadows on your subject. I've had times where I had to shoot around 12 and all I had to do was just pass light through trees, palm fronds to create interesting patterns on the subject I was shooting. I wanted to quickly mention an important tip I missed, reflected light. Wherever it is you find yourself shooting, always look at the surrounding. The surrounding will then tell you what kind of light will be reflected in your image what kind of color cast you would see in your image. If I was to be shooting in a lot of greenery environments, majority of my color casts will look greenish. My compound or my floor, a sort of grayish, this would then give me a little bit of a neutral reflected light. So always take notice of your surrounding, which will then influence the kind of reflected light you would have in your image. The fourth, which is the most commonly used and most advised for all photographers that I've heard of, is the golden hour light. The golden hour light can be from sunrise or can be right exactly when the sun is setting. Lights that come from the golden hour are warm, are soft. Because it's setting, it's very, very soft. And it's warm, it gives off this yellow feel on your image. Personally, I used to love shooting with golden hour. Right now, it takes a lot of things away from my skin tones. It warms it up. Fixing it in post will probably then change the environment. And that's not something I'm looking out for. But I've shot within golden hour recently a same way. It proved difficult trying to maintain the skin tones, but then I let it go because it was natural. The warmth was natural. 
Working with natural light comes with its own challenges, but I would want to reduce those challenges by giving you some tips on how to work with natural light in photography. Understand the direction of the light. The direction of the light can have a significant impact on your image. Front lighting creates a flat and evenly lit image, while side lighting creates depth and dimension. Backlighting can create a dramatic and artistic effect on your image, so look out for that and how you would want to use any of these tips to better produce a very good natural light image. The second thing you need to keep in mind is the usage of reflectors. Reflectors are used to bounce back lights onto the subject, creating a more even and flattering light. Reflectors can be purchased or made from materials like foam board or aluminium foil, or even shoot through umbrellas. So figure out which one you would want to use in your image. I prefer the usage of bounce cards, which produce diffused reflected light onto my subject. The third thing you need to keep in mind is avoid harsh shadows. You might ask, you're shooting in natural light, right? But how do I avoid harsh shadows? Harsh shadows can be distracting and take away from the image you're shooting. Positioning the subjects in diffused light or using reflectors can help to minimize harsh shadows. So when you bounce back light into your shadows, it opens up your shadows and it eases the transition from highlights to metals into shadows. Also, positioning your subjects within diffused light by using diffusers will reduce the intensity of your light source on your subject. You guys will see me use diffusers where I bring it closer to my subject and I send it far away from the subject. The idea behind the inverse square law, bringing your modifiers closer to your subject to produce soft light and bringing your modifier far away from the subject to produce less soft light applies here also whenever it is you're shooting natural light outdoors. Since you've come indoors, I am shooting at ISO 100 F 1.6, 1.4. Let's increase the shutter speed. Shutter speed of 250. Yeah, I like this. You were closing your eyes earlier. Deep it. Keep it more close. Close your eyes and be able to focus on the face outside. Chin down. Chin down. Keep it. Guys, this is Claudia. <laughs> she helped in today's video. Let me, give, let me give you guys my closing remarks on today's video. With the tips on shooting with natural light, I did mention avoid harsh shadows. I also did mention you should know the direction of your sunlight. I think I didn't mention the use of reflectors and also waiting for the golden hour. So in the video, you saw me use my bounce cards and my reflectors to quickly open up the shadows and help the transitions between the highlights to the midtones and true to the shadows. That probably helped a lot. And the second thing was to figure out the direction of the sun. And we, we started shooting around 3 p.m. So it was quite directional. I showed you how harsh it is when you use direct sunlight. I showed you how it is when you use diffusers. And I also showed you how images look like if you pass them through or if the sun goes to hide behind a cloud, also giving us quite an amount of soft light. Bonus tip is, when it's cloudy, it's actually the best time to shoot outdoors. So whenever you see the clouds covering the sun, during Hamatan, during rainy season, any other day you see overcast lighting, it's the best time to shoot with natural light. So the cheapest, biggest, softest, harshest, simplest one light source, which is the natural light, will help you as a photographer. So it's also a one light source and I'm adding it to my one light videos. So in all, mastering one light, mastering natural light, mastering the use of reflectors, diffusers, bounce cards, will elevate your one light, natural light photography if you ever find yourself shooting outdoors. I'll see you in my next video. Peace.